Now this isn't my first kick at the 5K can. I actually spent well over a month with the 5K Retina iMac, and while I did at one point install Windows on the Mac using Boot Camp, thanks to the iMac's, let's say, lack of upgradeability, there were some experiences that I couldn't properly evaluate the first time around, the most important of which being game performance on enthusiast-grade hardware at 5K, something that won't be an issue in today's video about the Dell UP2715K monitor, the 5K display you may plug in in any way as long as you can afford to pay. Sounds okay? Let's get started. Corsair H80i GT and H100i GTX all-in-one liquid coolers improve both the appearance and cooling of your PC. Click my face now to learn more. We'll start with the physical overview. It comes packed in an environmentally conscious cardboard packaging with the panel, the stand, and a metric whack ton of cables. Two mini DP to DP, two DP to DP, one mini DP, although that's 4K only, more on that later, and one USB 3A to B, also a power cable. Assembly is simple. Just click the confidence inspiringly well-built metal stand onto the back of the monitor where you'll also find the option to use a standard base amount if you want, and then you're good to go. Good to go with what, you might ask? Good question. Let's do the physical tour and spec stuff now. Starting at the front, the UP2715K is a 27-inch 16 by 9 aspect ratio display that runs at the otherworldly resolution of 5120 by 2880. The 218 pixel per inch IPS panel sits behind an edge-to-edge -edge sheet of glass that helps distract from the monitor's relatively large bezels in a world where the mantra seems to be slimmer is better, but then I doubt most folks will be distracted by the bezels when they've got that screen to look at. It boasts a contrast ratio of 1000 to 1, 100% sRGB color space coverage and 99% Adobe RGB coverage with a true 10-bit panel and a 12-bit 3D lookup table to back it up. Oh, and on top of all that, it features the full gamut of adjustments, tilt, height, swivel, and auto-rotating pivot. Hmm. Mm. Moving to the left, we find a Harman Kardon logo that by itself is completely meaningless, but combined with the surprisingly decent onboard speakers built into the bottom of the display impressed me. Then further around, an SD card reader whose type is not specified, in spite of the amusing amount of detail in the Dell manual about completely irrelevant things like the pinouts of DisplayPort and USB 3 ports, but I have to assume it's SDXC since they do say it'll handle up to one terabyte cards. Either way, it's a welcome addition. Which brings us around to the back, where there are some simple things, like the charging-only USB port here on its own, power in, the uplink and four data USB 3 ports, one with a bit more clearance for larger connectors, and a very unusual input configuration. The first thing you'll likely notice is the absence of anything but DisplayPort ports, with the next probably being the weird color coding on one of the full-size ones. Here's how this works. If you're insane, or just doing it temporarily, I guess, then you can plug a single DP cable into the big blue port or the mini one, but you'll be limited to 4K 60 Hertz, hence the insanity if that's your long-term plan for this monitor. If you value your money at all, and you realize that if you'd wanted to run 4K, you'd have been better served by a native 4K display, then you're gonna wanna plug two DisplayPort 1.2 compatible ports off your AMD, Nvidia, or Intel graphics card into both of the full-size ports, Make sure you've got the latest drivers with 5K support, and you're going to be ready to rock. My GTX 980 SLI test bench required no extra configuration. Plug and play, baby. Which I legitimately wasn't expecting. My early experiences with tiled displays, uh, you may have guessed by now that there are effectively two separate monitors in here with two side-by-side -side tiles, since unlike Apple, Dell couldn't create their own T-Con and display interface since it had to work with standard video cards, was not too positive. With the UP2715K, other than an occasional half-width BIOS screen and longer-than-normal delay when alt-tabbing out of applications, I didn't notice any issues. Yay! But at this price, 
Not noticing issues isn't good enough. It has to knock your socks off. I'll start by saying I was pretty impressed by the on-screen menu. Lots of modes, including a low blue light reading mode, and adjustments, including six axis color sliders for the custom calibration modes. Although, if the included calibration report is anything to go by, most people likely won't need them, since my monitor managed delta E's of less than two pretty much across the board, indicating excellent color accuracy. And I didn't notice any backlight bleed either, which was pretty nice. And while I was disappointed Pointed that dynamic contrast ratio cannot be turned off, the built-in dead pixel checker absolutely blew me away. I noticed while I was digging around in there that the only options for pixel response time are normal and fast, although I couldn't tell the difference between them at all anyway, but I actually don't mind that for a couple of reasons. First, I never really recommend cranking overdrive since I personally find the artifacts on the leading edge much more distracting than motion blur behind a moving object, and second, because the motion blur on this monitor is surprisingly good for an IPS monitor. And while I couldn't test input lag since my tester relied on HDMI. The gaming experience, as far as either of those things are concerned, is great, mate. But what about trying to game at that 5K resolution, Linus? Well, great question. <coughs> One word, wrecked. Actually, okay, not quite that bad. It's, it's not that bad, but forget about running games at max details. Uh, Tomb Raider 2013 was run at ultra with no motion blur. Ultimate with Tress FX was a stuttery mess. Crisis 3 managed very high textures and medium settings across the board, and Shadow of Mordor did okay at very high without motion blur and at medium textures. It should be noted that in all of these games, I turned anti-aliasing off manually if it wasn't already for two reasons. Number one, are you insane? My 980s were already suffering. And number two is that while at 4K, I like two times anti-aliasing, at 5K, I really don't see the point at all. I seriously cannot tell the difference. And I guess the word seriously is a great segue into this conclusion. This monitor is a serious piece of gear for serious users, at least the ones who are serious about accepting the limitations of it that come along with its astonishingly sharp pixel density. At 32 inches on the Acer B326HK, I found 4K barely usable, but usable without scaling. So you will need scaling on this one. 150% was borderline and 200% was great for me. And in Windows, I feel like that single-handedly defeats the purpose of the upgrade. In the old days, we upgraded monitors to get more pixels to put stuff on. It made our virtual workspaces bigger. But with 200% scaling, there is no advantage in this regard over a 1440p 27-inch monitor. So when Steam's game list looks like it's full of, you know, titles about 144K warfare, it feels like a bit of a poor investment for such a steep asking price when you consider that Apple includes a computer in the package for a few hundred more bucks if you're willing to give up some flexibility in terms terms of upgrades and that by the time scaling is pretty much fixed across the board, maybe another couple of years, much more affordable options will be available. So this one, professionals only need apply which can't necessarily be said about Squarespace. Squarespace is the website creation and hosting tool that is powerful, beautiful, and simple to use. They offer 24 seven support via live chat and email, which is great if you're one of those not necessarily a professional web designers, and they're available starting at only $8 a month with a free domain thrown in if you buy Squarespace for the year. Their whole concept is websites should be beautiful and look great on any device, so they have like a responsive design philosophy, which means your website's gonna scale on something like this or on something like Ugh, I gotta get this out of my pocket, or this. Uh, they've got a variety of different templates, so every website comes with an available online store module. It's great for things like a blog. It's great for things like a portfolio. They've got, uh, you can start a trial with no credit card required and start building your website now, and then when you do decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure you use offer code Linus to get 10% off your first purchase. If you do build a trial website, you've actually got two weeks to play around with the platform before you have to commit. So I think that's pretty much all there is to say about that. Squarespace.com slash Linus, linked in the video description. All right, so thanks for watching, guys. 
Uh, like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you thought it just plain sucked! Linked in the video description, you'll find places to uh, comment on the video on our forum. Check out cool merchandise like this t-shirt I'm wearing. Give us a monthly contribution if you love what we're doing and you think it's important. And you'll find a link to help us by changing your Amazon bookmark to one with our affiliate code so that we get a small kickback whenever you buy monitors, keyboards, dry erase pens, or whatever else the case may be. That helps us out a lot. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe slash follow slash all that stuff.